There are two assessments that need to be done and both are done by teachers. These are called the Sib R and the Sib C. The results of both assessments will be shared with parents or guardians for the purposes of confirmation. The Sib C is a support needs assessment scale. For this project, scores on two of the seven subscales will be collected. These subscales are intended to provide a standardized measure of student support needs for learning and participation at school in a general education classroom. The Sib R is an adaptive behavior scale. It is intended to provide a measure of a student's practical skills that are a part of their daily life. In this project, we must have CIS-C and CIB-R scores to provide standard assessment scale measures of the achievement levels and support needs of the students in the project. We are not reviewing any school records, so the CIB-R and the CIS-C assessments are direct assessment measures that will be used to describe our student participants. Without these measures, people could not get a good idea of which students might benefit from our supports planning process. So it is very important that these assessments are completed. This video is focused on the Sib R. To complete the Sib R, rate each item according to the following scale. Zero means never or rarely does it, even if asked. One means does, but not very well, or about one quarter of the time, may need to be asked. Two means does fairly well, or about three fourths of the time, may need to be asked. Three means does very well, always or almost always without being asked. For instance, item 20 is uses the toilet, including removing and replacing clothing with no more than one accident per month. If a student was completely independent in toileting, the correct rating would be a three for does very well. If the student was not independent, determining the rating really gets down to deciding how close to independence the student is. If the child was about three quarters of the way to being independent, the rating would be a two. About one quarter would merit a rating of one and clearly less than 25% independent would merit a score of zero. It gets confusing when a student is somewhere between two ratings, doesn't it? Yes, it does, but don't fret about it too much. Just decide whether it is fairly well or very well. For instance, a child who needed assistance half of the time would not be doing very well in terms of toileting. So, even though 50% falls in between the percentages provided for the ratings of 1 and 2, a child who needed assistance half of the time is probably more consistent with a score of 1, which means does, but not very well. So maybe it is best to first consider the percentages and then to think about the concept behind very well, fairly well, and not very well, and make the rating that makes the most sense. The scale is robust, so even if an item gets marked a little bit high or low, that is not going to make a big deal in the final score. Just do the best you can. Any other tips for completing the Sib R? As a matter of fact, there are. Basal and ceiling rules are used to shorten the assessment process. That sounds complicated. Well, it's not so difficult. Four items in a row that are scored a three provide a base, and four items in a row that are scored a zero provide a ceiling. So, if we start at item number seven, which is pull self into standing position, and score it a three, meaning the student can do this very well, and if items number eight, number nine, and number 10 were also scored a three, it would not be necessary for us to go back and score any items number one through number six, because items number seven through number 10 were all scored as a three, and therefore has established the base. Right, and for the ceiling, once there are four items in a row that are scored a zero, there's no need to score any more items. Now, if items are scored above or below the base and ceiling levels, that is not a problem. Identifying the base and ceiling are just a way to make the assessment go faster. Any other tips for completing the Sib R? My only other tip is to understand that the items on the Sib R are hierarchical, meaning that they are presumed to get more difficult as one progresses through the assessment. So, it makes sense to scan the entire assessment and start the assessment where you see several items in a row that, at first glance, would seem very easy for your student. Also, it is important to acknowledge that some items on the Sib R are a little dated, and it's okay to consider them in a modern context. For example, number 33 is, reads one or more articles in a regular newspaper at least weekly. So much of reading is done online today, it doesn't need to be an actual paper newspaper that is read for this item to be scored. If a student reads articles in online versions of the USA Today, the New York Times, or other newspapers, the online reading should be considered equivalent to reading an actual print newspaper. And remember, it is an achievement score. Don't worry about whether the child is motivated to read a newspaper article once a week. 
just whether they can read and comprehend a regular run-of-the-mill newspaper article if they were asked to do so. A good example would be an article about a local sports team winning a game. Okay, is it fair to say that in most cases, the Sip R won't take more than 10 minutes to complete? Yes, don't linger too long when trying to decide how to rate items. And as always, be sure to ask the coach if you need any clarification of items on the Sib R.